What's up everybody, back with another study, still in, in the series called The Gospels. Today we're going to be going through Luke 16, hallelujah. And let me preach the gospel. Everyone is going to stand before God for judgment one day. Anyone who hasn't received forgiveness of sins and been made right with God is going to be judged and thrown into the lake of fire for the second death of body and soul, destroyed forever. God requires perfection in order to inherit eternal life, in order to be with Him in His kingdom. None of us are perfect. We all sin and fall short of the glory of God. There's nothing we can do to earn our right standing with God, and that's why Jesus came. Came 2,000 years ago, born as a human, faced temptation just like us, but lived a perfect life. And although he was perfect, didn't deserve any punishment, the death that he died was for us. The death that we deserve in a lake of fire, he died for us on a cross. So that through him, we receive his righteousness. We receive that perfect life that he lived through faith in him. And he took on that death that we deserve for our sin. Repent and believe the gospel. Repent means to have a change of mind. We need to turn. Have means to have a change of mind, to turn. We need to turn from our sins and follow Him. Believe in Him. Accept His free gift of salvation. Turn from our sins and follow Him. Repent and believe the gospel. Give your life to Jesus today. Now, Luke 16, hallelujah. This has always been one of the more difficult parables to understand. Now, he was also saying to his disciples, there was a rich man who had a manager. And his manager, this manager, was reported to him as squandering his possessions. And he called him and said to him, what is this I hear about you? Give an accounting of your management, for you can no longer be manager. The manager said to himself, what shall I do since my master has taken away the management from me? I'm not strong enough to dig. I'm ashamed to beg. I know what I'll do. So that when I'm removed from the management, people will welcome me into their homes. And he summoned each of his master's debtors and began saying to the first, how much money do you owe my master? And he said, a hundred measures of oil. And he said to him, take your bill and sit down and write 50. Then he said to another, how much do you owe? And he said, a hundred measures of wheat. And he said to him, take your bill and write 80. And his master praised the unrighteous manager because he had acted shrewdly. For the sons of this age are more shrewd in relation to their own kind than the sons of light. And I say to you, make for yourself friends by, by the means of the wealth of unrighteousness. So that when it fails, they will receive you into the eternal dwellings. And so it's interesting because... People can't receive us in, into the eternal dwellings. You know, only, only God and the angels can. The point of this, though, he said he praised the unrighteous manager because he had acted shrewdly, acted wisely with what he had with his opportunities at that time, with his options at that time. And the point of this really, because we have a, a similar scripture, the next verse says, he who is faithful in a very little thing is faithful also in much. And if we go over to chapter 19, I'm going to read from verse 11. It says, While they were listening to these things, Jesus went to tell a parable because he was near Jerusalem and they, were, they supposed that the kingdom of God was going to appear immediately. So he said, A nobleman went to a distant country to receive a kingdom for himself and then return. And he called ten of his slaves and gave them ten minas and said to them, Do business with this until I come back. But his citizens hated him and sent a de delegation after him, saying, We do not want this man to reign over us. When he returned after receiving the kingdom, he ordered these slaves whom he had given the money to be called to him so that he might know what business they had done. The first appeared, saying, Master, your mina has made ten minas more. And he said to him, Well done, good slave, because you have been faithful in a very little thing. You are to be in authority over ten cities. Faithful 
faithfulness, faithful in little. Verse 10 of chapter 16, he who is faithful in a very little thing is faithful also in much. The more God is going to give you opportunities, God is going to give you money. What you do with it determines if he gives you more or not. Here and eternally. And it says, I make for yourself friends by the means of wealth of unrighteousness. Basically, we need to be wise with what we have here. It says, for the sons of this age are more shrewd, more wise in relation to their own kind than the sons of light. The people of the world are wiser with their money wiser in things of this matter monetarily than the people of God are. You see, people in the world, people hustle. People invest, people are wise according to worldly things with money and, and but people of God aren't the same way they aren't all willing to put their money and opportunities into the right places into the kingdom as much as people of the world are into the world and that's really uh one of the points, like the big point of this, let me read it one more time. The master praised the unrighteous manager because he had acted shrewdly for the sons of this age. See, this is an unrighteous manager. Because the sons of this age are more shrewd in relation to their own kind than the sons of light. Or to their own kind, to the people of God, to the kingdom of God. I, and I say to you, make friends for yourself by the means of the wealth of unrighteousness. By worldly money. So that when it fails, so when this worldly money fails, you will be received into the eternal dwellings. They will receive you into the, into the eternal dwellings into the kingdom we need to be wise with the money and the opportunities that we have in this life we need to put into the kingdom and going back over to chapter 19 if we continue on I'm going to read from verse 20. Another came saying, Master, here is your mina, which I kept, a, which I kept put away in a handkerchief. For I was afraid of you, because you're an exacting man. You take up what you did not lay down and reap what you didn't sow. He said to him, By your own words I will judge you, you worthless slave. Did you know that I am an exacting man, taking up what I did not lay down and reaping what I did not sow? Then why did you not put my money in the bank? And having come, I would have collected it with interest. Putting money, putting your money and opportunities into the kingdom. Rather than hiding it. We need to be wise with what God gives us. We need to be wiser than the people of the world are with worldly money for worldly things. We need to be wise... For the kingdom to do be wise with what our money and opportunities that we have for the kingdom in so many different ways there's so many things we can do so many schemes so many hustles and 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 schemes opportunities we can come up with ways to reach people for the kingdom of god 
ways to advance the kingdom that we're not doing at the moment. We need to think about these things and we need to put our money in the right places. We need to put our talents, not the monetary talent like Mina, we need to put our abilities and opportunities, we need to put our abilities in, into the right places, into, into ministries. Put our money into ministries, into into whether that's starting one on your own or investing, putting it in the bank, as it says in chapter 19 of Luke. Putting it into another ministry so it, it'll gain interest. Uh, working for another ministry, put uh, tithing into another ministry. Now let's continue. Let's be wise. Let's be wise with the things of God. Let's be wise with the opportunities and the things that God gives us. He who is faithful in a very little thing is faithful also in much. And he who is unrighteous in a very little thing is also unrighteous in much. Therefore, if you have not been faithful in the use of unrighteous wealth, this worldly money, who will entrust the true riches to you, the heavenly riches? And if you have not been faithful in the use of that which is another's, who will give you that which is your own? Even if we're working, say, you know, just working for a company. But this is speaking about kingdom. If we can't work for another, be uh, righteous, be faithful, and that which is somebody else's, which is kingdom speaking, God's, how are we going to receive our own? No servant can serve two masters, for he will either hate the one and love the other, or else he'll be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. It's God over everything. We serve God, seek Him, His kingdom, and His righteousness, and the rest will be added to us. We need to not be seeking money. Yes, we need money to operate in this world, but God will provide. We need money to put into the kingdom, but God will provide. And when He gives us money, we need to put it into the right places. Now the Pharisees who were lovers of money were listening to all these things and were scoffing at him. And he said to them, you are those who justify yourselves in the sight of men, but God knows your hearts. For that which is highly esteemed among men is detestable in the sight of God. That which is highly esteemed among men is detestable in the sight of God. The Pharisees wanted to be seen by men, recognized by people. We need to not worry about pe what people think. We need to worry about what God thinks. The law and the prophets were proclaimed until John, John the Baptist. Since that time, the gospel of the kingdom of God has been preached. And everyone is forcing his way into it. But it's easier for heaven and earth to pass away than for one stroke of a letter of the law to fail. And so we, we see the same thing. In Matthew chapter 5, he came to fulfill the law by living it out perfectly, not to abolish it, not to get rid of it. Heaven and earth will pass away, which hasn't happened yet, before one letter of the law is done away with. There's parts of the law that don't, don't apply to us right now, that can't biblically apply to us right now with no Levitical priesthood, not us not living in the land of Israel, most of us. Uh, no temple, you know, a lot of the law doesn't apply to us right now. And part of it changed in the new covenant with, uh, as far as, uh, you know, as far as the priesthood and, uh, and atonement. But 1 John 3, 4 says, sin is transgression of the law. The law still applies we still have to keep the commandments. The law that we're, not un no, that we're no longer under, that Paul spoke of, 
is the law of sin and death. How so the law of sin and death is how our sin leads to death. The law of sin is sin. Paul spoke about seven or eight different laws in his writings. And people just assume when it says law, it's speaking about the law of God, but that's not the case at all. Probably not even half the time it says law in the, new, in the writings of Paul, he's speaking about the law of God. We're no longer under the law of sin and death, which is, how, which is the curse of the law, how our sin leads to death, but under grace because of what Jesus did for us. Everyone who divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery. And he who marries one who is divorced from a husband commits adultery. It's interesting that, uh, that that's just thrown in there in the midst of all this. Now there was a rich man. And he habitually dressed in purple and fine linen. Joyously living in splendor every day. And a poor man named Lazarus was laid at his gate covered with sores. And longing to be fed with the crumbs which were falling from the rich man's table. Besides, even the dogs were coming and licking his sores. Now the poor man died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. And the rich man also died and was buried. In Hades he lifted up his eyes, being in torment, and saw Abraham far away, and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried out and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus that he may dip the finger dip his, the tip of his finger in water and cool off my tongue for I am agony, in agony in this flame but Abraham said child remember that during your life you received good things and likewise Lazarus bad things but now he is being comforted here and you are in agony besides all this between us and you there is a great chasm fixed so that those who wish to come over from here to you will not be able and that none may cross over from there to us. And he said, Then I beg you, Father, that you send him to my father's house. For I have five brothers. In order that he may warn them so that they will not also come to this place of torment. But Abraham said, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. But he said, No, Father Abraham. But if someone goes to them from the dead, they will repent. But he said to him, if they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, they will not repent, be persuaded, even if someone rises from the dead. Which was about to be Jesus. And also, Lazarus, if it's the same Lazarus. Which I believe it probably is. I can't say 100%. I believe it's the same Lazarus that Jesus rose from the dead. But I can't say for sure. And but Lazarus was risen from the dead. Jesus rose, I think, two other people from the dead. He himself rose from the dead. Still, the people weren't persuaded. They still didn't believe. And so from my understanding. Well, first off, I'll say that they didn't believe in the law and the prophets. How are, how are they going to believe in the Messiah if they didn't believe in the law, the law and the prophets, which wrote about the Messiah? But the word there, Hades, in Hebrew, that's Sheol, in Abraham's bosom. I don't believe that's heaven. I, I'll, I'll just tell you my understanding on it. I believe there, there are two separate parts of Sheol. Under the earth, that's where our souls wait for resurrection. We read in, I believe, in Ecclesiastes, our spirits go back to God who sent them, but our souls are in Sheol. I believe there's two two separate places: Abraham's bosom and. Uh, the, the, the bad part of Sheol or Hades or hell. I, I don't like using the word hell because it's trend, hell is trend. There are, there's different terms that are translated into hell that, de that mean different things in English Bibles. For instance, Gehenna that's speaking about the lake of fire. Uh, Jesus said, don't fear man who can only kill the body. Fear God who can 
destroy both body and soul in Gehenna in the lake of fire. And so I believe that's where souls are until they're resurrected either to life or to judgment in the lake of fire. Either eternal life or the lake of fire. And we have to be ready. We have to help others be ready for the kingdom of God. We don't want people in that torment. And that, that's temporary torment. And then the lake of fire. And, and Jesus said, uh, the Bible says that's the second death. Second death of body and soul. I personally believe in, currently believe in annihilationism rather than eternal torment. But I do believe there's torment in Sheol or Hades before the resurrection and judgment. And uh, we need to reach people. There's so many people headed, headed to the lake of fire. And so many people are lost. So many people will die every day. We need to we need to preach. We need to tell people about Jesus. We need to tell them our testimony. We need to tell them about eternal life. Persuade them. We need to work in all the gifts of the Holy Spirit. We need to be full of the Holy Spirit. We need to keep God's commandments. Serve Him with all our heart, all our soul, and all our strength. Let's let His light shine. We are the lamps. The Holy Spirit is the oil. Let's keep those lamps lit. The Bible says God inha inhabits the praises of his people. Listen to some worship music. Praise, by, praise God. Let's serve him with all our soul, all our heart, all our mind, all our strength. Let's do his will in all things. Let's follow him with all our heart, all our soul, and all our strength. Let's be ready for his return. He's coming soon. That's the end of Luke 16. Thank y'all for tuning in. Love y'all. Shalom.